to talk about bending. Uh, one of the core essential techniques, particularly for electric guitar, um, but also something that has a bit of a challenging learning curve, is something beginners in particular really struggle with, um, and it can trip people up beyond that beginner stage too. It does take a bit of um, dedicated practice to really nail bends. So in this video, I want to look at three things that will help you get there. So those three things are uh, technique, your target note, <clears throat> and the setup of your guitar. So we'll start with the last of those first, the setup of the guitar. So <clears throat> the Les Paul has a, um, a flatter a fretboard than a guitar like a, a Fender Strat, which does make it a bit easier to bend. Um, because when you bend that note, there's nothing on top of it to bump into. With a, a, a guitar like a Fender Strat, the fretboard has a radius, bigger radius, so it's got a curvature to it. That is, is really nice to play. It's very comfortable to play. When it comes to bends, you have to make sure that your string height has been set up correctly. Otherwise, as you bend one string, it's gonna bump into the curve above it from that, that shape of the, of the fretboard. So that's just one consideration. If you're bending a note and it sounds like it's choking out, it's not going anywhere, that's, that's a good possibility why. Um, it's not something you're as likely to encounter on, this, on a guitar like this. As you bend, there's nothing. That's probably not going to be the issue that you have on a, a flat guitar like a Les Paul. Uh, it may die for other reasons, you, but you'll probably know if your finger's easing up or if you're just not getting the strength behind the bend. So first things first is just to make sure that the guitar is set up correctly. Um, if you're not sure, it's always worth talking to uh, you know, guitar tech or, or someone with experience who you trust and they can have a look at it. If it's not set up properly, hopefully they can do it for you. Um, and then at least you'll know that the guitar isn't the issue. So moving on from the setup is um, target note. So when you bend, you need to know where and why you're going. So when you bend, what that's doing is adjusting the tension on the string so it sounds like a note a couple of frets higher, one or two frets higher. If it's a really big bend, you might go three frets higher. So to show you what I mean, if we take this note, that's an A. This is a B. So we're gonna try and hit that B. You can hear we got there. If you don't get there, it doesn't sound right. What's that? That's it's not that. You can tell it's just flat. So we're actually closer to this A sharp here in the 11th fret. So you need to be mindful of where you're going because in a good solo, uh, every note serves a purpose. Now, that's not to say you never want that dissonance that can come from, from hitting what sounds like a, a wrong note. Um, but again, that's done deliberately and you would be mindful of doing it and that would dictate when you go there, how quickly you're on it and, and where you go from there. And it's not really the same as playing a, a wrong note by mistake and through lack of technique. And if you're hitting a wrong note by mistake through lack of technique, that means you're unlikely to play the right note at the right time. So um, that's something to be mindful of. You need to know where you're going. Okay, so you can also do the, the one fret. So you notice, you should notice when I get this right and when I get it wrong. So I'm gonna try and go through a bit of a range. So this is the note we're going for. This is the 11th fret on the B string. So you can, the reason I'm demonstrating it this way, by hitting the wrong note as well is, or bending to the wrong pitch rather, is 
to demonstrate how bad it sounds. When you get a bend wrong, it sounds horrendous. It sounds flat, it sounds out of tune, it sounds like the guitarist doesn't know what they're doing. So, you can tell we're close, but it's just a bit on the flat side. Then if we go a bit higher, make it sharp, Okay, so I won't linger on that too much because it's unpleasant. But the point is, that's your target note. Where are you going and why are you going there? So if we take, um, uh, now <clears throat> I'll have to play a fret down because this guitar's in standard, but if we were to play a, a piece of the November Rain outro solo. Okay, so Slash plays that. Okay, so there's a few little bends here and you can really tell the importance of getting them right. So that first bend is a, is a one fret, half note, so half step bend. So it's the same as the next note that he, he plays it immediately afterwards, okay? So that's the bend, he releases the bend and then goes to that next fret. So that needs to be dead on. If it's not dead on, okay, you can just, it's, it's not, obviously it's not the same. Because those two notes, the same pitch is being played, one is a bend and one is a straight note, right after each other, it's very apparent when it's, it's not been done correctly. And that's going to change the whole feel of the song, uh, it's going to be a bit jarring to the listener. And of course then, a player like Slash, and he's not the only one, you know, a lot of players play with a lot of bends, and they play with a lot of bends because it creates a certain sound or texture or feeling that they want in that solo, in that song. Now, very often that, that sound or texture is a sense of emotion, a sense of movement in, in that piece of music that you don't get as a straight note. Now, if you can't play bends properly, if you can't achieve that sense of movement and emotion, then, then the, the bend isn't doing its job and really you shouldn't be doing it. So <clears throat> it's important to get it right. So as far as the target note goes, there's nothing really other than practice for this. You need to know where you're going and why you're going there. And then you can start to mess around with other sort of um, techniques, which we'll get to in a second. Once you've got a target note, you can also start doing things like pre-bends. So instead of playing a note and bending, you can, before you pluck, you bend the note up and then you release. Of course, if you're doing that, it's very important that you know if you're pre-bending, because you've not got any audio feedback to this, that's purely by feel, you need to know that you've got it right, you, and again, that's just practice. There's also an element of, actually a strong element of being familiar with the guitar that you're, you're doing it on, because different guitars can feel different, especially if they've got a different scale length. So the Les Paul here, shorter scale length, there's less tension on the string compared to, again, a Fender Strat. So if you were to pick up one guitar, start doing pre-bends, pick up the next guitar, start doing pre-bends, you may notice some, some um, difference in the pitch. So make sure that you are practicing that. But you need to know where you're starting, why you're starting there, and how high that bend should be. Okay, so if we do, uh, if we do this, it's not the same as, that one straight away sounds flat. We can go high. Now none of those are necessarily bad or wrong, it, it entirely depends on the song. But it depends what you're trying to do as to whether it will sound bad, okay? If you're trying to do a two-step bend and you end up doing a half bend, then it's not going to sound great. So target note, hugely important when you're bending, especially if you want to bend with authority, you want to be confident with it, you want it to sound right. That is the big difference when it comes to bends between a beginner player, someone with less experience and a more experienced player is those bends have a purpose, the note goes somewhere and they sound uh, confidently struck. Which brings me to the uh, 
Third point, and that's technique. So bending isn't the easiest thing. There's resistance from those strings. They, they, you know, they push back, especially, again, as I said, if you're playing on a guitar with the longer scale length, where there's extra tension on that string, it, it does push back. So the way to do this is you want to get strength behind that bend. So you, you'll see immediately, I've got three fingers on the fretboard. So you'll see beginners often, and, and they're trying to do it with one finger. Just, it's, uh, you haven't got the same control. It's not as easy, and the bend sounds weaker. So, there are times when you'll be able to use one finger. It's often the index finger, and that might be if you're bending. So you're bending over here, you release, and then you just kind of... But again, you can, you, you can see I'm bending down, in a, in a downward angle. It has the same effect on pitch, so you're still going... The, the pitch is still changing as if you're going one or two frets this way. Bending down doesn't doesn't lower the pitch that way, um, but you could do it that way, and that's certainly easier if you're just using one finger than trying to go that way. So the technique here is you want to get strength behind that bend. So you want more than one finger on the fretboard. Um, you, I'm, I'm anchored behind the back here, and then. You can see my forearm moves. So this isn't, my wrist doesn't stay static and just the fingers move. Okay, everything goes into this. So get, use that leverage from, from the elbow and the wrist, okay? You don't want to be all over the place. But it's about getting some, some rigidity behind that bend. Okay, so um, actually that's a, another quick point to mention. If we're talking target notes, it's helpful to find, um, to play two notes together. So this is a, um, a nice way to do this. If you take, we'll do the fifth fret on the B string, and we're going to do the seventh fret on the G string. Now, you'll notice the ninth fret on the G string is the same note as the fifth fret on the B. So this is our target note, okay? So we're going to play the five and the seven to simultaneously, the five on the B string, the seven on the G string, and we're going to leave this one where it is, we're going to bend with the ring finger so that this note, we're going to bend it up to pitch here and these two will sound the same. What you should hear, as these notes get closer, there'll be some, some wobble in the notes and then they'll, they'll merge together. So I'll show you what I mean. We're going to bend them, play them together. Okay, so you hear the wobble as they get closer together and then they, they that wobble disappears and you just hear one pitch. You hear this a lot in solos, okay? So if you're learning bends, if you're, if you're learning the technique and, and reaching a note, that's a really, really good exercise because it takes all the guesswork out. You, if you're playing a note, yeah, you play one. You have to play both one after the other and then just for a split second, but you have to remember what that sounded like and you have to work out if you if you hit it or not. There's an element of, you know, there's, there's room for error. With this, it takes that out because you're hearing them both together. You can also use a tuner for this. 
So if, if, if I wanted to bend the 10th fret here on the E string, I know that I'm going to bend into E. Sorry. Or maybe D sharp, you know, depending if you're in one fret or two fret bend. But if you use a tuner, that again, takes the guesswork out. Uh, so that's a, the target note, the technique, and they obviously go hand in hand. You can't reach the target note if your technique isn't there, but you can have really good technique and not hit the target note because you're shooting too far or you're not getting there, not getting far enough up. So recommend doing this. It doesn't have to be those two frets. You can do it, those two strings, you can do it anywhere. And using a tuner. Okay, so choose a note, be mindful of it. Okay, I'm gonna play this note, that's an A. I wanna do a full bend, that's gonna take me to a B. You get a tuner and you just play that note, bend it until that this tuner says you hit a B. That will really help you get the confidence and the strength behind that bend. So make sure the guitar's set up properly, including intonation, because you can have the technique, you can have the, the target note and everything, but if the, if the string isn't behaving, you're gonna think it's your fault. Target note, know where you're going, why you're going there, and technique. You wanna have uh, more than one finger if you're bending up that way. Again, you can have one finger if you're bending down. Um, but strengths, you wanna have more than one finger on the board. Push, spin from the wrist, really. Right, don't think it all comes from the finger, okay? Uh, and practice, use a, use a tuner, play two notes together and, and merge them, and there's nothing but practice for it. So I hope that helps. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or feedback about this, if you've got another way of practicing it to help other people, and good luck.